So we need to find a way so that the students can see 10 easier and beyond, maybe counting on. And find um, the smaller numbers inside of the larger numbers. Yes. So we can do that by using the 10 frame. It's really important for teachers to have the chance to talk and reflect with one another. The kinds of instructional shifts that are required by the Common Core and what we know really impacts student learning is hard to do alone in isolation. And so the opportunity to talk with teachers, look at student work, and really analyze and think about next steps together is a really big deal. Do you think we should do this as a quick look or put it up for a long time? If we do a quick look, I don't think we should do all three frames. So what would you do? Maybe 10 and 2, and then bring in the other 10. So you want them to come up with that they see 12, and then, and then they see more. 10? Mm-hmm. Because I think if I do all three with mine, they, if it's a quick look, they might get confused. Because they're used to seeing the wreck and wreck and it being in their face and then be able to visualize how to move it, this might confuse them. But I could try and we'll see. I think what I'm gonna, do you think? I think I'll try with all three because I yeah. I think because they're tens, that I'll should be really fast. easy for them. We are going to do a math talk and we're going to be looking at it. So it's going to be a visual math talk and we're going to be using 10 frames. I'm going to give you a quick look and I, when you're looking at it, I want you to try to figure out what number you see what numbers you see. Okay, so once we get the mental movement and he says it out loud, we can do a turn and talk and have them explain it to each other mm -hmm. to make sure that they understand. And then afterwards, we could even have them come up and show it quickly, move the- Oh yeah, he loves doing that. Move mm -hmm. them to show what they did, so I move. So everyone else can actually see. Mm -hmm what they were already seeing mentally. Yes. I think that'll work. So if they can explain it to each other and then they explain it and we show it, then hopefully the ones who don't see it will then be able to start thinking about it in a different way. So if you want to, because nine is a smaller number inside of 10, so if you make this a 10, make this a 10, and you have two more, you get the same answer. Let's see, can you guys turn and talk? about how nine plus nine plus four and 10 plus 10 plus two both equal 22. So let's turn and talk. Four here Four. three here. Did you see? Eric? Nope. Okay, show him again, because he was not, he Ten, couldn't see. Five, uh -huh. four. Four on the top. Three. And she saw oh, three on the bottom. Now oh. I understand it. They have to trust themselves because they know 10 plus 10 is 20, but even some of them who could tell you 10 plus 10 is 20 would still want to count. So, so with the quick look, they just have to, because they don't have enough time to count it, they have to say, okay, if I want to answer. And we thought about their responses. We were also able to figure out when would be a good time to have them turn and talk. How might it help them if they do it at certain times instead of if we hadn't thought about it, we might just, if we had done it every time, we might not have gotten the same responses. In the order and the way we did it. Mm -hmm. I think that made a big difference in how they responded and how they were thinking. Teachers so often end up in classrooms by themselves and when they get the chance to talk to other teachers about the ideas of math, about how children learn, about what they might try differently, they get a lot further in changing their own practice and they're so much more effective.